You know, why have I been critical of this uh, worship of British royalty? Well, A, they're not even British, but B, it's the antithesis of the American system that we worship people because of title or royalty. It's about what you stand for, who you are, what you build, what you write, what you produce, what inventions you make, where you trailblaze. And I'm all about being an individual. And I admire people that are honorable and well-spoken and intelligent and that are good fathers. And that's why we see an attack on the family and an attack on fathers. And we have the best-selling author of Dear Father, Dear Son. He's also written a bunch of other best-selling books. Larry Elder joining us to the bottom of the hour. Then we'll continue with your phone calls. And uh, Ed Asner is going to be popping in to give us his take on everything. The former head of the Screen Actors Guild and, of course, famous, famous actor in his own right. Uh, but that is coming up in Totally Open Phones and more news in the third hour. But uh, I saw this clip last week, and I said, please get Larry Elder. He was on everybody's favorite Redcoat. Uh, he was on uh, the Piers Morgan show and really let him have it. It's an amazing 11-minute video that's up on Infowars.com. It's also on LarryElder.com. Uh, but let's go ahead and play about a minute of the opening exchange right here with Larry Elder. I was, because you weren't doing her any favors by condescendingly trying to convince her that she's a victim. This is a young lady uh, who didn't apply herself, a 19-year-old who's still in high school. Instead of saying, young lady, take this as an opportunity to take stock of your life, you treated her like she was a victim. And that's how you're doing this whole thing about race and racism. 7,000 murders last year, Pierce, of black people. Almost all of those were committed by black people. Since Trayvon Martin has his unfortunate death, there have been 480 blacks killed in Chicago alone. Seven 75% of those crimes have been unsolved. Where are the cameras? Where are the shows? It's outrageous to act well, as if black America, okay, black America should fear some non-black guy stalking some black kid uh, uh, at night. The likelihood of a black person being killed uh, by a, by a non-black person uh, is extremely remote, which is why this became a big national issue in the first place, Pierce. Right. It's perfectly possible, as we have shown uh, so enough. many times. To, and, to and, and again, 94% Justice Department numbers of black on black and it's like they found an Easter bunny or a leprechaun or a pot of gold uh, or the unicorn, you know, the mythical creature, the racist white person. And I know there's racist white people. I don't run into a lot of them. When you run into them, they're big losers, folks. That, their whole identity is about race, and that's why they're usually failures. Winners want to be around winners, and that's why royalty disgusts me. Obama's the new royalty because of what color he is. He can do no wrong. Uh, it's the same thing with these British royals. What have they done? But lecture me about carbon all day. I don't like Obama, and I don't like the Queen of England either. Larry Elder, do you get where I'm coming from with that? Of course I do. And, and Alex, I gave him facts. It is an unfortunate fact that blacks are 12% of the population. You throw out the women, you're talking about 6%. Throw out old people and young people, you're talking about 3%. Out of 3% come half of all homicides. This is why people profile. I'm not mad at people for profiling. I'm mad at the young thug who's messed up my image. And the reason the young thug is there is because the young thug grew up in a home without a father. 75% of black kids born in homes without a father. At some some point, 85% of black kids will be in a home without a dad. Obama knows this. He gave a speech, Alex, at Morehouse, and he said a kid growing up without a dad is five times more likely to be poor, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. So what are we talking about here? They take some aberrant case, and they act as if this is some referendum on America. It is as ridiculous as what happened in Sandy Cook. Sandy Hook and Pierce Morgan wanted to make some pink cheek white kid the face of gun violence in America. Absolutely. It's the same deal. It's like guilting everyone. All gun owners, you killed the kids. They said that. And now all whites, you want to corner the little black kid and murder him. Alex, it's misdirection because the real problem is what the left has done to the family. Between 1890 and 1940, look it up. In the census reports, a black kid was more likely to be born in a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Along comes Lyndon Johnson. Uh, he incentivizes all these inner city people into getting money, provided there's no man in the house and allows the woman to marry the government and allows the man to abandon his financial and moral responsibility. And now fast forward, we're talking about race and racism and high capacity magazines. It's absurd. Sure. Well, the Bible says, and it's got historical examples because the Israelites were, were very learned. So they wrote down what happened. And the more stuff they dig up, the more they find out how accurate the Old Testament and New Testament is historically to things that really went on. They knew when a society is about to collapse, women are put in as the boss. And, and I'm not knocking women, it's just a fact. The government has done that. Fake feminism, all of this. Uh, the women are slaves to the government. 
uh, what happened? What happened? Because I've seen the same numbers you're talking about, where illegitimacy in blacks was lower than it was in whites. Crime was lower than whites. How did this happen? Well, what, two things happened. Again, uh, women were incentivized into getting money from the government, provided there was no man. And the civil rights movement went from demanding equal rights to demanding equal results. That's where you get these race hustlers like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson demanding this and demanding that. Equal rights and equal results are two different things. Equal rights uh, are one thing that everybody is entitled to. Equal results are things you have to work for and earn. And that's what happened. Why do you think the media is desperately pushing this? And, and am, am I wrong in saying you're a little bit older than I am and you've been a syndicated radio host for right. several decades and you know, follow the news continually. A am I right in saying this is pulling out all the stops that we've never seen race baiting at this level, A, and then B, why are they doing it? about it is one would have thought that it would have been diminished by now. We've elected a, a black president. We re-elected a black president. Obama got more of the white vote than John Kerry did. So one would have thought that uh, people would have, would have perceived that to be a statement about how uh, relatively race-free conscious this country is. Instead, this is another in a continuing series of race hustlers. Tawana Brawley was a race hustle. Jenna Six was a race hustle. The Duke lacrosse thing was a race hustle. When years ago, USA Today ran all those cover stories about black churches being burned, we found out uh, when all the dust settled, part of the expression, that more churches, mosques, and synagogues were burned than, than black churches, and USA Today had to apologize. This is another in the continuing series, the mantra, white people are after black people, black people are under siege, when in fact, if you ask black people what's really going on, far and away they're concerned about what I said before, about crime, violence, bad schools, uh, the fact is that one out of two black Black adults does not have a full-time job. These are the things that are concerning us, and this is misdirection to take our attention off of all these things and look on nonsense because the left can't come to terms with the damage that they have done. How do you reverse it? Because I genuinely uh, want to empower everybody. I don't want to pay for all these private prisons. I don't want to see the culture degenerating uh, across the board. I mean, for those of us that want goodwill in the face of conscious race baiters like mm -hmm. Piers Morgan and Michelle Maddow and uh, all those guys, I mean, they know what they're doing, divide and conquer. How do we respond to the people this vicious? Well, Alex, we, we, we do what we're doing. We do what you're doing. You're fighting back. The fact is that I call it the, uh, the access of indoctrination, Hollywood, academia, and the media. And every day you get up in the morning, you are infused with all of this stuff. You cut on your local news, and you hear about how oppressed black people are. You, you, you go, to, go to the theater, and you read about, you watch a movie called Hurricane, uh, a movie about a lie based upon uh, somebody who murdered three people, and suddenly Denzel Washington is a hero, uh, even though he murdered three people in the real life. This is the kind of crap that kids are subjected to every single day. Uh, the, the media, uh, overwhelmingly left-wing, academia, overwhelmingly left-wing, Hollywood, 80 to 90 percent of the money that they give to political contributions goes to the Democratic Party. So this is what we're up against. You are fighting it. I'm fighting it. Uh, people have to wake up. They've got to realize that right now, at all three levels of government, federal, state, and local, they're taking away half of the American people's money. In 1900, federal, state, and local, they took about 7 percent. This is outrageous. The founding fathers would be spinning in their graves. We need to reverse this. Absolutely. Uh, looking at this, uh, what do you really in your gut expect to happen now? Because it really seems the media is trying to stir up a race war, uh, and, 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 I, and I don't see it working too well, but they don't care. They just keep doing it. I think it's backfiring. I think this might do it. Uh, Al Sharpton, uh, people are taking a look at him. This is a guy who every night rails and rails and rails about why rich people ought to be paying more taxes, owes millions of dollars in back taxes, federal, state, and payroll taxes. Uh, this is a guy who got involved uh, in the, the Ground Heights thing. Some people in New York call it the most serious pogrom in the history of America. He was right in the thick of that, and of course his whole career was based upon Tawana Brawley. I'm thinking and I'm hoping that maybe NBC might begin to take a look at him. There's got to be a lot of uh, negative letters. I saw a poll that shows George Zimmerman has higher ratings than Al Sharpton. I mean, I think that's it. It, it. More than race baiting, it's about these people becoming celebrities. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and they're celebrities pimping the race, and it's a disgusting spectacle. Well, it really is. And
man. I, I call Sharpton uh, Reverend J. Edgar Sharpton because <laughs> along with J. Edgar Hoover, you, you look at the guy still in power all these years, and you wonder why. Uh, and it's through uh, manipulation uh, and intimidation, and that's what Sharpton does. He'll go to a corporation, yell and scream. Uh, he'll imply he'll bring a whole bunch of black people there uh, to pick it if you don't give me this deal. Next thing you know, the money's passed hands. There's a book called Shakedown written by a journalist named Ken Timmerman who talks about how Jesse Jackson does this. I interviewed uh, Timmerman on my show. He couldn't get arrested on any of the other major shows because they're all in bed. Absolutely. And a lot of the Republicans, I'll be honest, like to play along with this and not really go after it because that then scares their constituents and, and you know, makes it racially based on top of it. I say we just circumvent the whole thing and expose it, as you're doing, as the political football uh, that it's basically become. I want to... I want to go to break and come back with one more segment with syndicated radio host and best-selling author uh, who's with us today here, Larry Elder. Then we're going to get Ed Asner's take on this, the wars and everything else, and then open phones in the third hour. I'm Alex Jones. You can follow us at Real Alex Jones on Twitter. You can follow Larry at, at Larry Elder on Twitter. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. All right, folks, it's the final segment with Larry Elder, uh, who really is just a individualist who wants freedom and and it's so clear what's happening here the government wants dependency it wants a group under its control that's why nbc edited the zimmerman tape 911 call that's why they used uh photos from five six years before of trayvon martin that's why the prosecution suppressed images of a gun and loot on trayvon martin's cell phone uh this is amazing and and, and the police chief said they wanted him indicted even though that wasn't the facts and it is politically scary. What do you expect the Justice Department to do now, uh, the same folks that run Fast and Furious, Larry Elder? They're going to do nothing. They're going to huff and puff, and Obama's going to give you the impression that they're going to be looking at it. And, of course, Sharpton wants to keep up the heat. But the bottom line is the law does not support bringing charges at all, nor do the politics support it. The polls show that a plurality of Americans are perfectly okay with this not guilty verdict. By a two-to-one margin, they believe uh, that uh, he's not guilty of manslaughter. And by a three-to-one margin, they believe he's not guilty of murder. And so if you really want to rile people up, go ahead and bring charges again. Uh, and maybe some non-whites might get a little ticked off about what's going on. So I don't expect, expect anything to happen. And uh, let me just say one other thing, too. Obama gave a bunch of anecdotes about how black people are being uh, oppressed in this country. If you walk by a car, you hear a car door lock, a woman clutches her purse, you're, you're followed in the department store. All of those things, of course, have happened to everybody back black that I know of, including me. Obama, however, doesn't give other anecdotes. I'll give you one. I'm in Cleveland dating a black girl living in the inner city. I'm at a park in Cleveland, 2 o'clock at night. We're having a wonderful time. In the distance, she spots a group of young black men. They're coming towards us, walking not very fast. And Sharon says, let's go. I said, what's the problem? They don't have any women with them. Bad sign, let's go. And we got up and we left. Now, this is an inner city black woman. This is what she said she did. Now, where's Obama? What, was she a racist? Well, I couldn't say it as good as you just said it. Um, where do you expect this thing to go with the cause celeb, which really isn't... Why is the establishment so anti-white? 
uh, because that's, quote, the majority, and it's a way to beat the majority into going along politically with what the power structure wants? I think, I think there's a lot of white guilt. Uh, and there's a lot of people that feel noble if they stand up like Pierce Morgan and puts his hand around some woman and condescendingly tells her how smart she is. It's that soft bigotry of low expectations. So they build straw men. I've actually found a lot of liberals quietly are actually the real racist, and I think, I, I think that's what it is. I think, well, they're, I think they're racist. Well, here's what it is. When you talk to a, a guy like Pierce Morgan and he looks at somebody like Rachel Gentile and says how smart she is, this is the kind of condescending attitude that is the basis of race-based preferences. The reason that you are allowing blacks and browns to get into schools, not, not Asians, by the way, even though they're, they're ethnic minorities, is because people really do feel that we black people and brown people are too stupid to be able to get really good SATs and the same kind of test scores that everybody else. So therefore, they lower the, they lower the bar for us. It's, a, it's a, a condescending, if not racist kind of attitude, and that's what George, Herbert, George, George W. Bush meant when he talked about the soft bigotry of low expectations. What's going to happen in the future? I would recommend that George Thurman change his last name to Benghazi, and then the media won't give a damn anymore. <laughs> that's a good idea, George Benghazi. Yeah, that's it. Who? What, what do we care? I don't care. <laughs> man, you're a genius, I tell you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just are funny, man. It, 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 so, so where do you expect this to go? We got the two guys shot in a parking lot for a free Zimmerman thing. And I'm seeing all these racial attacks across the country. So many, I can't even cover them now. Yeah. And, 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 and the media is, is totally covering this up because it doesn't fit the narrative. And you see three female bodies were found in a vacant house uh, in Cleveland. You know, I, I also say this, too. Uh, like we, if we had a few more George Zimmerman's, maybe we'd have a few fewer Ario Castro's. I thought we wanted people to be proactive. Hillary writes a book that says it takes a village. Uh, Janet Napolitano tells us, see something, say something. And then you do so, and you're a knuckle-dragging race has gone out of profiling. So I can't figure out what they want. Well, when it's all said and done, it looks like a lot of white people are going to get killed over this. And where is the media on that? I mean, I agree with you. I think they've gone a bridge too far. I think that even if they're successful stirring up a race war, uh, that, that this is the beginning of the end. And I think it's the last gasp of, of, of the big race pimping. I think I it's think still... So I think it's still going to go on, though. I, I think so, too. And I think people are pointing out the hypocrisy. A few years ago, there was the most brutal double homicide that I've ever seen in Knoxville, Tennessee. Four black people, uh, middle uh, mid-20s, uh, uh, raped, tortured, and murdered two young white students in the most graphic, heinous thing, way I've ever heard. Uh, very little coverage. And these are the kinds of things people are beginning to, 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 to point out and point out the hypocrisy. Well, I mean, a black media. lady grabbed a, what, a 10-year-old kid and burned him to death with a torch for no reason in Houston. No media coverage. And again, I'm not even hyping this up because I don't want to create a bunch of division. But when it's such hypocrisy, it, it I mean, you've got to cover it. Uh, in, uh, in Arizona, black guy in his SUV with his fiance, a Latino on foot crosses in front of him. Black guy accuses a Latino of, of cutting him off. They get into a dispute. A black guy pops him one time in the chest. Black guy's not arrested right away. Latino's family has to agitate to get arrested. Nobody cared. Ultimately, the guy got arrested, but nobody cared because the race of the shooter was the wrong race. It's amazing. It doesn't fit the script, right. the narrative. Larry Elder, thank you so much for spending time with us. We'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. All right, there goes Larry Elder, folks. We'll be right back. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.